So you want to write a track inside of Ableton Live, but you don't know where to start. So in this video, I'm going to teach you from start to finish, as a beginner, how to make a song. We're going to only use what comes standard in Ableton Live. We're not going to be using anything extra. And we're going to make a short little song. And the song that I'm going to write is going to be a 110 BPM down tempo track. It's probably only going to be a minute or a minute and a half or two minutes long. It doesn't need to be long. It just needs to be from start to finish something complete. And you can follow along and make the exact same thing. Or you can use the instructions that I give you, but then change them slightly to what you desire to make. So let's get started. In this first video, we're going to make the kick and the bass. So I'm not going to work in this view right now, this session view. I'm going to press tab to move over to the arrangement view. And inside the arrangement view, by default, we have two MIDI channels and two audio channels. And we're going to be using these two MIDI channels. And first of all, over here on the browser, we're going to come to drums and we're going to navigate through the drums by just clicking and auditioning different sounds. And we're going to select what suits uh, the sound that we're going for. So this can be a, a long winded process. You can listen to a lot of these drum kits and uh, get a vibe for them. But what I'm going to be listening for is mainly the kick drum. Uh, I'm I'm just looking for the kick to start with. I'm going to make a kick. I'm going to use a kick and then I'm going to use a bass um, from Ableton's inbuilt um, sounds. So without further ado, I'm going to start um, auditioning some of these sounds. So follow along with me as I listen to them. Okay, click and drag once you've selected the um, drum rack that you like. So I like this Jarble click, kick, sorry, Jarble kit. Uh, so if I click it, hold it and drag it, I can drop it onto that first MIDI channel and just let it go. Ableton will load for a second. And now you can see that this kit is loaded into, onto that channel. Um, and you down here, you can click on all of the drum pads and audition the sounds. Cool, so I want that, the kick. So what I need to do in order to be able to arrange the kick in a pattern is I need to create a MIDI clip that I can then put the information inside of. So um, I can put my cursor over here and you'll see how it turns into a little magnifying glass. And if I click and drag down, it zooms in. If I click and drag out, it zooms out, right? So I'm gonna zoom in until I get to like the point where um, across the top you can see one to two and then three, uh, two to three. So I'm gonna select this first bar from one to two and I can right click and I can insert a MIDI track and inside this MIDI track, uh, if we select over here and then we come back to it, you can see the piano roll shows up, shows up down here. Uh, but sometimes it won't. So you've got two little tabs here that swap between looking at the instrument and then looking at the actual piano roll. And if you can't see the piano roll, it's because you haven't actually selected the clip. So you come over here, you select the clip, you can see it on this tab, on that tab you see the instrument. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we are going to go inside of the clip and arrange this kick. So if I move, scroll down, uh, I can scroll through all the different sounds, right? So if I click this little blue icon, I can audition them. So there's the kick and I'm gonna arrange it um, in the way that I want for my track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clip, click this entire clip and I'm gonna go Control L to loop. So then when it gets to there, it starts around again and I can just keep listening to the pattern that I'm making. So, so I think kick and then another kick here. So kick, kick, yeah, kick. Yeah, that's great. So then what I want is actually to set the BPM 
uh, in Ableton. So I'm just going to pull that down to 110. I should have done that at the beginning, but that's okay. So now we've got... Okay, no worries. And what I want to do is I actually want that second kick and that third kick to be slightly different to the first kick. I want to sort of change the volume of them. And we're able to do that with the velocity controls. So I can actually grab this little orange um, sort of lollipop looking dude and I can drag him down and that changes how loud the kick plays and how intensely it's, it's played. So if I pull it down to like around there and then I listen to the first kick compared to the second kick. Cool. There's a big difference. So I'll pull that up a bit more. It's a bit too quiet. Cool. And then this one, it comes up too loud. So I'll just pull it down to like there. What have we got that? We've got 59. So let's have a listen. I think this one still comes a little bit too quiet. So we'll pull that up a bit. And then this one up a bit more. Yeah, I think that works really nicely. So we have our drum pattern and it's nothing too complicated and you can obviously play around. What you can do is you can click on it and you can move them around with your arrow keys so you could listen. Okay, what's it going to sound like if it's over here? Press space bar. And there's nothing wrong with that. So we've just actually made two patterns. So what we're going to do is that can be our first pattern and we're actually able to name the MIDI clip so that we can keep track of things. So if we select it, we need to be careful when we click down in the bottom half of this clip. So this whole purple uh, or lilo or whatever color you want to call it, um, color is, it has two sections when you select it. So down the bottom, if you select it down here, you're just putting your cursor on the timeline. Up here, if you click it above the halfway mark, that's when you're actually selecting the clip. So when I select it, I can go control R to rename and I can go pattern one. I can click on the pattern and I can go control D to duplicate it. And you know, you see, I've got two of them. And over here, if I click on this clip, then I can adjust the MIDI information inside of this clip. If I click on this clip, then obviously I can do it on this one. So if I click that kick, you'll see that it's selected here and I can use the arrow keys. I'm gonna put it back to where it was. And then I'm gonna click on the clip Control R to rename pattern two, All right? So now I've got pattern one, I've got pattern two. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab pattern one and if I just click on the title and move it around, I can uh, move it across the timeline. And if I make a mistake and sort of drop it there, I'm like, oh shit, what do I do? Control Z to move that back, okay? So click on the pattern and I wanna drag it and I wanna put it here. But if I let it go, it moves it and places it there. I don't want to do that. So if I go control Z, what I want to do is I want to take that pattern, but I want to make a second copy there. So there's still, there's still one at the beginning and then there's one there. So if I press control, you'll see that underneath my arrow, there's a little plus. That means I'm going to be uh, copying it. So if I press plus and then I let my mouse go, now I've made a copy of it. So if I grab the end of the loop brace, I can drag it and make sure that I'm looping this whole space and I'm gonna put one last pattern here so I can go ahead and grab the MIDI uh, from the pattern two. I can click, drag it across, press control to copy it and drop it. And now inside of this one, I'm gonna change the MIDI again. So this stuff, let's see what that sounds like. Bit too broken and a bit too disturbed. So. What I could do is I could try, um, I could try both of those. So here I've got a kick on the th the, th the fourth beat, right? And in this one I've got a kick in the middle of the third beat. So what I can do is I can keep the um, I can keep the first half of the pattern exactly the same. And then for the second half of the pattern, I'm just going to put these two kicks in. Just see how they sound. So let's listen. That doesn't sound very good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and move that away. There we go. I think that sounds good.
yeah sweet i think that pattern works really well and what we'll do just to keep it up We'll name this and we'll call it pattern three. And then over here we can click, we can go control R and we can name this kick. So our kick is done for now. This is all we're gonna do with our kick pattern. I really like these sorts of kicks. And there's not too much of a click on the kick because I don't like big clicky kicks when I'm working with down tempo music. I like sort of nice fat and round kicks that just kind of um, play nice and deep and low. So next what we're going to do is we need to start making a bass line. So we also need to decide which musical key we're going to be in. And I've decided already I want to work with D. And I haven't decided whether it's going to be minor or major. But I'm going to show you how you can put something in Ableton so that you don't have to worry too much about the scale or the key that you're using. So MIDI effects, scale, and I'm going to drop it on the second MIDI channel because that's where I'm going to put my sub bass. And then I can change this to D. And what the scale plugin device does is if I make a MIDI clip, select that area, go control shift M or right click insert MIDI clip. Any of these notes that I draw in here, the scale plugin is going to adjust them to stay in scale. So I could put notes in the wrong note for that scale and it'll just readjust it for me. So that's quite cool. Um, so that can be really good for beginners. So what I'll, what I'll do is I know that I want to use the root note of D. And if I drag this out, I know that I want the first bass note to play from the first bar through to the start of the third bar. I've already kind of figured out what I'm going to do for the kick in the bass, so that's why. The next note I'm going to use is going to be G, okay? So it's going to go D up to G, and it's going to play from the third to the fourth, and then it's going to come down to an F. So I'll click that, drag, and pull it out. But if I go ahead and then press spacebar and play, there's no bass, and that's because I haven't put an instrument on this channel. But just to show you that MIDI, excuse me, will still play, even if it doesn't have a sound. So it's still there in the background, and we can still write our MIDI notes in, but it doesn't know what to do right now. So when we add the bass, the bass and the kick are going to play over top of one another. And it's probably going to be just a little bit too loud initially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the kick down. I'm going to click on the volume here and I'm going to go negative six. So negative six is going to pull it down six decibels. And then if I come over here and I type in the browser sub, I like this hip hop sub bass. So if I grab that, drag it and I drop it on the MIDI channel that's going to be my bass channel, now I've got that on there and I can click on the volume of this and I can go negative 10 on the sub bass. So I just want a bit of room to move, to breathe. If everything's really loud, then we're going to get distortion and this, it's just going to be problems. So if I click on this channel on the title, I can go control R and call this, um, I'll call it sub bass. And the reason I'm calling it sub bass is because this is going to be the very low layer, but I'm likely to put another layer over top of it um, that doesn't have all of the same bass, but it's just another textured layer that maybe is easier to hear if you're not using good quality headphones or speakers. And it's likely that you might not hear this bass if you're listening on laptop speakers or something like that, because it's going to be quite deep and low. So if I press spacebar now and play it, you're going to hear the sub bass now because I've put the instrument in, but you're probably going to hear it in quite high pitched because I drew those notes in and they're quite high notes. So what we'll do is we'll play it. So yeah, you can hear that, that if I solo this channel, it's just a high whiny note. And if I double click on it, now I'm looking at the notes and if I select all the notes and I hold shift and I press the down arrow, it's a bit deeper. If I do it again, shift and then the down arrow. And if I do it one more time. Cool, that's, that's nice and deep. So that's what we want, a deep sub bass. And if I unsolo that, Mm -hmm. 
that's what I want to start off my track. So one last thing we'll do is we'll just add that second layer of bass, okay? So I'm gonna click on the sub bass and I can actually go Control D on my keyboard. And what that does is it duplicates that channel. So it makes two versions of it. So here we are. And if we come down here and we look at the channel, um, so just remember this shows us the MIDI. If we click this, this shows us the instrument. We can see the hip hop sub bass instrument. We can also see the scale. Um, but what we want is we want to take that hip hop bass out so we can delete it. And now we've just got that second channel. We're going to rename the channel and we'll call it mid bass. Okay, so we've got the sub bass and then we're going to put a mid bass on top of it. And let's have a listen to some basses or maybe even pads because this could be a pad sound. So if we come to instruments, we can see pads here that's underneath operator. So let's have a listen to some of them. Okay, so I think I'll use this one. So we'll click and drag and we'll just see how it sounds. So let's have a listen to it. Solo it. And then if we listen to it together with the sub. What I'll do is I'll just turn it up a bit in volume. So I'm gonna make this one a bit louder. But what I need to do is make sure that this sub, uh, this bass doesn't have too much actual bass in it because then it's going to conflict with the sub bass because this is holding all of my sub content. I don't need this bass to also have that. So what I'm going to use, and this is the first introduction to an EQ for you, is I'm going to use an EQ. So I'll grab that, drag it and drop it. And I can see that I've got a lot of sub information here. So I'm going to cut that out. So what I'm going to do is this control, I can either boost or cut base. Um, and I can change that shape. So instead of just being a cut like this, I can actually make it a straight up cut like that. Okay, and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to cut the highs as well. So I'm going to just take that little part of the space. And what I'm going to do with this as well is I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to copy it once. I'm going to copy it twice. And then I've got mid bass and I'm going to name this one with an L. I'm going to name this one with a C and I'm going to name this one with an R and remember that's just control R so I'm changing the names and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this one and I'm going to pan it all the way to the left. So what does pan mean? I've got two speakers in front of me and two headphones on my head. One is a right, one is a left speaker. So if I pan, I can control where the sound is. So I can say I want this one to only be in the left speaker. So if I then play, you can only hear it out here. And then if I say to the this one, I want it only to go to the right. Now I've got a bunch of spread sounds. So what I'll do is I'll make the one in the middle quite loud, negative six. So that one pokes out the most. And then I've got the detail ones on the side. And then what I can do is I can click and drag to select all of these. I can go control G and I can name that group mid, mid, oh, mid bass group. And then if I click uh, the sub bass and I go control G again, I can go, oops, a daisy. Um, just gonna make sure that I didn't do anything. Yep. Cool. So now I've got, we'll just go control Z and do that again. Um, control Z, control Z. So I, what I was doing is I was clicking the space group, clicking the sub base group, going control G to make a group for both of them. And then I can rename this one base. So let me just re-explain that. 
So if I drop that away, all of the bass disappears. It's still playing, but it disappears. So if I open that back up, I have inside of here my sub bass. I also have the mid bass group. And then inside of that is a bunch of instruments. So I've got a group within a group, okay? So that's a cool feature of Ableton. And then if I listen to it all together, Okay, and then let's add the kick. Okay, and there's two last things that I want to do. I want to also EQ that kick drum. So we grab an EQ, drop it on the kick drum, and this is, I'm, I'm making a conscious decision to change the characters of these sounds, okay? So if we listen to the kick, we can see the waveform here. And it's kind of scratchy in the top half. And I don't want that. I just want a knocky kick. So if I click on three and I make it a cut, I can place it like there and I can just cut all that scratchiness out of it. And then if I grab this number one, I can also cut any of the super lows out because they're not really necessary. Right, so now that EQ, if I turn it off, turn it on, it's a more controlled sound. And then finally, what's happening right now is when the kick plays and the bass is playing, the kick and the bass are fighting because the bass and the kick both have sub frequencies. And this concept is maybe a little bit advanced for the scope of your first song, but bear with me as I explain it to you. So on the entire bass channel, what I'm going to do is I, every time the kick plays, I want to push the volume of the bass out of the way. So the kick plays and it's just the kick there and then the bass comes back again. So we can use a compressor. And I'm just going to do this quickly. You can rewatch this as many times as possible uh, to understand the concept. But I'm going to click the compressor, I'm going to drag and I'm going to drop it on the bass. I'm going to click this tab to open up the side chain and this is going to listen to other channels and I can tell it to listen to the kick channel so whenever the kick plays this compressor on the bass channel is going to hear it okay and then it's going to act in the way that I tell it with these controls so first off with the ratio just for the sake of in the example just make the ratio infinite Okay, leave the release as it is, press play, and then start pulling the threshold down and see what you can notice. And you should be hearing, when the kick plays, the bass is moving out of the way. Cool. So now we have the great, great foundations for the rest of our track to build on. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to make some percussion that's going to go with this uh, and we're going to start building a groove. And then once we've got a groove, we're going to make some instruments that are going to go over top. We're going to build a melody and we're going to make a really beautiful, lush, down-tempo, psychedelic tune. So see you in the next video.